Today I'm doing an unboxing, hence the box, of some hardware I'll be reviewing in about a week's time. Intel 4th Gen Xeon, aka Sapphire Rapids. Hardware I never thought I'd get, and hardware I've very rarely spoken about, other than in the context of Intel 10 nanometer, now Intel 7. Hey, how's that process going? And that joke frankly got so tired I stopped doing it a couple of years ago. But still, here we go, an unboxing of some hugely expensive processors. And you might wonder, why such a large box? And the answer is there's more in the box than just a couple of CPUs. There's also a load of packaging. An ASRock motherboard, for example. And also a Noctua cooler. That's an installation frame for the 4th Gen Xeons. And here we have two CPUs in some Intel packaging. Behold, £6,300, £4,050. Never in my life have I had processors these valuable in front of me. And to go with those processors, we have some Kingston memory. It's Fury Pro, an EK Pro water block. And as I mentioned, a Noctua cooler just to get us up and running. And here we have a hugely expensive ASRock motherboard. To summarise, we have this ASRock W790WS motherboard, which is £899 here in the UK. 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Renegade Pro memory, which sells for £502. Two processors that will set you back a mere £10,500. An EK Pro block for socket 4677 that will sell for about £140. And a Noctua cooler so we can get everything running on a flat test bench for about £125. Plus this mysterious installation frame that you use to correctly install a CPU on a cooler before you put it in the motherboard. How odd does that sound? Wolf Pro. Tough, ready, scalable. Now I know what you're thinking. You're wondering why I'm doing an unboxing of this very expensive hardware when Intel has already announced their new Sapphire Rapid Xeons. They've told us all sorts of details about the new family of processors with its enormous stack of SKUs. Indeed, pre-orders are available on the Xeons, so you can put your name down should you choose for six or four thousand pounds of processor without any difficulty whatsoever. The same is true for the ASRock WZ790 workstation motherboard. Kingston will happily sell you some of their Fury Renegade Pro DDR5 ECC memory right now, today. And the same is true for Noctua with their U14S DX4677 cooler. Admittedly, EK at the moment only lists their new Pro block for this Xeon as a pre-order. But the point is, these parts are not secret. And as further evidence, Linus just recently did a sponsored preview of an HP Z8 Fury workstation with four NVIDIA graphics cards and a mighty 56 core processor. And in that preview, he even showed us some benchmarks. So why you may wonder, am I doing an unboxing and a preview rather than just getting on with my review? The point is that Linus did a preview of a pre-built workstation. He didn't pull it apart and show us a processor as if seeing a processor is massively exciting. Exciting. This is a review of DIY components, motherboard, processor, cooling block, air cooler, memory, i.e. a workstation or even a server you can build yourself. That, according to Intel, is the very finely nuanced point. So after that preamble, you may be wondering what on earth are Intel fourth generation Xeons all about? We've got two distinct families of processor, the Xeon W2400s and the Xeon W3400s. We've got the Intel Xeon W2400s up to 24 cores with support for four channels of DDR5 memory. Alternatively, the Xeon W3400s 
up to 56 cores supporting 8 channels of DDR5 memory. This is registered ECC memory rather than your regular desktop gaming DDR5. When you look at a block diagram for the new Xeons, it looks familiar, much like a desktop processor, except the numbers are enormous. Take the Xeon W2400, up to 24 cores, 48 threads, and support for up to 2 terabytes of DDR5 memory in quad channel, as well as the possibility of connecting up to 4 GPUs. Move up to the Xeon W3400 and we have up to 56 cores or 112 threads, and now we have support for up to 4 terabytes of DDR5 memory in 8 channels. And if you like, you can connect to 7 GPUs. And looking back at a familiar diagram, we see the processor consists essentially of four different CPUs all tied together using an interconnect called EMIB. This is unlike AMD's approach where they have a central I.O. die and a whole bunch of chiplets around the periphery which are connected together with Infinity Fabric. The upshot is that the new Xeons look large. Indeed, if you compare them to a desktop processor such as a Core i7-13700K, they look absolutely enormous. But just to put things in perspective, here's a Xeon sat alongside a current AMD Threadripper, and they are essentially identical in size. Referring back to the Intel Accelerated event in July 2021, we see that Sapphire Rapids, or as it's now known, 4th Gen Xeon, was due out at the same time as Alder Lake, which is 12th gen on the desktop, and as a result it uses the same architecture for the cores as Alder Lake, which is Golden Cove. On the desktop at the moment we're on Raptor Lake, which uses Raptor Cove cores. So we can see that Sapphire Rapids is using the Intel 7 process, and we can see the next Xeon, Granite Rapids, is due to use Intel 4, the same as Meteor Lake, which we're expecting at the very end of 2023. When we look at the latest information from Intel, we see that 5th Gen Xeon, or Emerald Rapids, is an update to the current 4th Gen, is due to be delivered at the end of 2023 on the same platform as 4th Gen Sapphire Rapids. Significant point with 5th Gen Xeon is going to be increased Gen on Gen core density, which sounds very similar to what we saw with 13th Gen on the desktop. It's the same package as 12th Gen, but we got far more performance from very similar cores. Following on from 5th Gen Intel Xeon, so presumably 6th Gen Intel Xeon, we'll have Granite Rapids, scheduled in 2024, and these will have P cores or performance cores fabricated on the Intel 3 process. But before we get there, we'll have Sierra Forest, a type of Xeon with E cores, up to 144 cores fabricated on the Intel 3 process. And as Intel says, due to ship in the first half of 2024. And looking at the Xeon roadmap, you can see we have two types of Xeon. We have Xeons with P cores, i.e. big grunty cores, and we have Xeons using E cores, i.e. lots of very small cores. Let's not forget, E cores are based on what used to be called Atom, and the roadmap stretches out to 2025. Alongside processors using both P cores and E cores, Intel also has GPUs, dedicated AI chips, and FPGAs, or Field Programmable Gate Arrays. In other words, they have a full stack of products, and they can take the fight to that pesky AMD. And to show how customers might go about choosing a suitable processor, they give us a chart titled Data Center Infrastructure Requirements Evolving. And when you look at the lines on the chart, it is honestly difficult to fathom what the heck they're talking about. My only interpretation of this chart is that Intel is claiming they've got something for everybody, no matter what their requirements might be. The CPUs optimized for mainstream compute chart is somewhat more sensible. On the one hand, P cores. On the other hand, E cores. P cores, you won't be surprised, are optimized for performance. E cores are optimized for efficiency. You will note these are not hybrid processors. You either have P cores or you have E cores. So 4th gen Intel Xeon Scalable delivers far more cores than the 3rd gen. We've now got DDR5 memory and PCI Express Gen 5 expansion. 
but Intel is promising significant further steps in the next generations of Xeons over the next two or three years. And just for a laugh, let's have a look at the socket that's going to be used in the Birchstream platform for both Granite and Sierra. This is LGA7529. And here we have a photo doing the rounds online of a fourth gen Sapphire Rapids in a Birchstream socket, absolutely dwarfed by the next gen hardware. And here we have a quick breakdown of how Intel sees their workstation platforms. Mobile and entry level are low power and Core i5, Core i7, Core i9 processors with which we are familiar. Then we have the Xeon W2400s. These are mainstream processors, 225 watt TDP and the Xeon W3400s, such as the two processors we have here. And these have a max TDP of 350 watts. And here's a listing of the stack of processors in those two families, W3400 and W2400. Up to 24 cores in the W2400, up to 56 cores in the W3400. And I'm confident that is the reason I have this hugely expensive hardware from Intel, because they've delivered 4th gen Xeon, i.e. Sapphire Rapids, and they've got some good stuff on their roadmaps that they're promising faithfully this time they'll deliver over the next couple of years. And they want to build interest for this product and for those products. So my next job is to discover whether or not they've achieved success.